Hiya folks, let's do a lawnmower video. Well, I don't know whether you remember about a month ago, I actually started work on this lawnmower. It was a runner, but it was overfilled with oil, if you remember rightly, by near enough a cupful. And also the springs seemed to be in the wrong place. So I actually got it running by putting the springs on the right place. This is a Honda powered laser mount filled lawnmower. And the springs, as I said to you, was on the wrong place. And I was able to look at another one, which I got over there, and actually realized that the springs were put on incorrectly. So. The oil was overfilled, the springs were on the wrong way, and after I corrected that and put some fresh fuel in it, the thing did run, although it would not run on slow speed. So my next port of call then was to actually strip the carb down, put it in the ultrasound cleaner, which is what I'm gonna do today. But before I do that, I actually, I'm gonna show you how to set the governor on one of these things, because this was another thing that I actually set up as well. So um, if I just show you how I set the governor, perhaps you, if you've got the same problem, with a, a mower which is running up or it's running too fast, for example. These are very, if you get that governor set in slightly the wrong place, then it will just over rev and you'll never get the right tick over speed or the, the, the right running speed. So let me just show you first of all on how to set the governor on one of these. Well, first of all, let me just show you the location, the correct location of the springs, first of all. And you have one from here up to there. And then you've got this one that floats down at the bottom here. Now you can see the way that this one's mounted with the loop going through from this side and the open bit is on the other side. So that's the way. You can actually put that spring on the wrong side and that is the one that controls your governor. If you put that spring on the wrong side, can you see at the top there, there's a hole where the spring just slides up and down when it's uh, not engaged. And if you've got that spring the wrong way around, in other words, facing this way around, when it does this movement, which I'm doing now, the spring will actually drop off. So you have to have this spring actually this way round, as you can see there, look, with the little loopy bit at the back there. So be, be aware of that. It's very easy to put that spring on the wrong way and have it facing this way, the pointed, the open end, so to speak, coming out this way. And what will happen is, as I said, when it operates the governor arm, uh, adjust, the, adjust itself, it will actually drop this spring off. So that's that. Well, this is the governor arm here, as you can probably see, and there's a nut. You can probably just see a shaft there. Now, on the back of that shaft, there's a flat, and that flat enables you to get hold of a pair of pliers, for example, here, and just hold the shaft. And that means that you can then, once you slacken off this nut here, you can then rotate this shaft either clockwise or anti-clockwise. So what you need to do to set up these governors correctly is first of all undo this nut here, which is like a pinch bolt. So I'm just going to do that now. I've already set this one, but I'm going to reset it again. So you just undo the pinch bolt enough where you can then rotate that shaft. And what you need to do, as you can see, if I just put them pliers, let's get me smaller pliers like that. If I get them pliers on the, can you just see the slight movement I'm getting on that? It's only a very slight movement. But if you get this wrong, you'll never get the thing running right. So what you need to do, once you can rotate the shaft like that, you need to get hold of it and fully turn it clockwise until it doesn't move anymore. Once you've done that, you hold it in that position, and whilst you're holding it in that clockwise position, you then need to take this arm and make sure it's fully back, not forward. It wants to be fully back. So this is turned fully clockwise till it can't move anymore. The arm wants to be fully back. And once you've got that position, I'm letting go of that now. I'm still holding that lever fully back and you then nip up your governor arm bolt. And it's only a pinch bolt. And that is your governor arm set. Now, when you move your governor arm, as you can see, you'll have a bit of slack in it there and that's the way it should be. And that spring, as I said to you, is very important that it's put on this way and not the other way around so that the pointy bit's sticking outwards. Otherwise, when it does do its throttling, it will just drop off through here. So 
that's that's the governor arm now set. So you now know that that governor arm is set correctly and you don't mess about with that anymore. So if it's running rough after that and it's not changing speed correctly and it's cutting out, there's a very good chance that one of your jets in your carburetor is actually blocked. Now this one, as you can see, has got the throttle up here. Some of these have got an adjuster on the carburetor, depending on your model, and you can actually raise and lower the speed on the actual carburetor. It depends what model you get. So we're going to take the air filter off now and just start to dismantle the carb. And one thing you've got to note also is the linkages where they go on this carb anyway. So let me do that now and I'll be back with you in a minute. Right, well there you go, I've undone them two main bolts there and this other third bolt there actually holds the bracket on. And as you can see, you've got a little linkage that goes on there and you've got another linkage at the back there which goes on there and there's also a very thin spring. I don't know if you can see that there on the back there. So you've got a basically, and then the fuel line is underneath at the back there as you can probably see there. There is a clip on that, so you've got to get that clip off. So I'm just gonna do that now. Right, there we go. It's a little bit fiddly, fiddly to get that um, bit out of there. And this carburetor here has actually got a throttle stop on it as well. So um, I may have been able to wind that in a bit, so I'm not too sure yet, but I'm gonna put it through the ultrasonic cleaner anyway, as I say, because uh, it didn't like low speed, and that could have just been a matter of turning this up as well. And there's another uh, jet here as well. So it's probably been standing for a good while anyway, this carburetor. So I'm just gonna take the base off now, strip it down, put it in the ultrasonic cleaner, and then we'll put it back together and possibly have to adjust that tick over speed there. Right, well here we are inside now and I've got my ultrasonic cleaner on. I've basically just filled that up with uh, hot water, which is at roughly 70 degrees at the moment from the kettle. And I've put a splash of uh, thinners in there in case there's any lacquer build up in any of the uh, internals of the carburetor. And that combined with the uh, ultrasonic cleaning action should shift any lacquer build ups. So that's what I'm hoping anyway. So I'm just gonna undo this and strip this down. And again, you've got a a 10 mil bolt on the base there. So I'm just gonna undo that. And uh, really want a clean working area when, you've, when you're doing stuff like this, so. And a bit methodical, so I tend to lay things out as I'm doing them as well. So that's that down there. And there is a gasket on there, which can be a little bit tight, so you might need to just give it a little bit of a tap. There we go. And inside the fuel bowl. There's a little bit of muck in there, not too much. But as I say, we're gonna clean all that anyway. So I'll put that down there. And that leaves us then with the uh, needle valve and the float mechanism, as you can probably see there. And uh, you just basically pull the pin out. It should come out with your hand. If not, use a pair of pointed nose pliers. And I tend to just drop that in there. Lift out the float. And underneath the float you have a little needle hanging, so that's what you've got to be careful not to drop out or lose. Take that out. Just inspect the tip of it. If you can see that small. It's got a little, um, in this case, a little soft seal triangulated washer there, and that can get a groove in it. But that one looks okay from what I can see anyway. And then we've got the internals of the carb. There is a diaphragm, in uh, a, a gasket around there, which I'm try not to disturb but also in the the main part there you've got the main jet there so I'll be taking that out and when you do that make sure you get a good fitting screwdriver otherwise it's very easy to chew that up so I have quite a few selections of screwdrivers and just go in there until you find one that actually fits it perfectly and it's quite a wide bladed one that should be for this so um, And as I say, if you get this wrong, you'll end up chewing it up and then you'll have to probably buy a new carb. So make sure you've got a right fitting screwdriver. Also inside here, you've got the, uh, the emulsion tube. There's another tube directly underneath that. And I'm just gonna come in from the, one of the Venturis or through the side there and just push that down. Because we should be able to get that out as well. Here we go, it's just dropped out. Now this is a thing with loads of little holes in it, I don't know if you can see that. 
and it's possibly these holes blocking that could be causing our problem as you can see if I try and hold that for you there there you go if you can see one shaft end is longer than the other end which is shorter and it's also this is wider than this bit there if you can see that so it can only go in one way and this is the end that goes in first and then it just slightly sticks up through the venturi when you look at it through there when it's in so that's how you know that you've got it in the right way that's something i've just learned now so there you go there's that so i'm going to put that in there as well and on the side now we've got some screws on the side here we've obviously got the throttle stop screw which is this one which is this one here that bumps against that plate there as you can see there look if i screw that in as you can see i'm hoping this is what this is going to uh do because this is what was uh possibly causing it not to run on the slow tick over so there's that one you've also got this one here i'm going to be taking it out and i think that might be a mixture screw so count the turns out from that and there's also another one here which i'm going to take out as well and looking around the actual carb that's all the things i can take apart so that's what i'm going to take out now and then i'm going to dump the whole lot in the ultrasonic cleaner and give it about a 10 minute blast so that's what i'm going to just take these out now now that that little mixture one was 12 turns in so i've done it undone it for 12 turns so i'm going to remember that because i'll be putting that back in 12 turns when i go in the throttle stop one i'm not too bothered about but i need to take that out to get to the little jet underneath it so i'm just going to take that screw out of there and then i'm going to find a decent fitting screwdriver again for my little jet here which i'm not too sure which this one is but um it's going to come out there's no amount of turns it's just a tightness one so it's just a basic undo at the end of the day so there we go and i think there is a little jet in there which i can't actually get out by the looks of it and i can't hold up to the lot i can't actually see through it so i'm hoping maybe that, that could be the one that's giving us trouble as well so i'm just going to dump this all now in the ultrasonic cleaner what I normally do with the ancillary bits, I get a clean cup. I drop all the small bits into there, all the jets and stuff. Everything goes in there. Like that. And I get a drop of the fluid out of there. And I just literally sit that in the uh, tub for it to do its magic. So I'll turn it on for 10 minutes. and start it up and let's see what happens right there we go let's just empty that out of there one thing about the ultrasonic cleaner it gets everything absolutely spotless so i'm just gonna oh hold that in there and i've got the airline i'm gonna just take it outside and give it a good blow through with the airline as well right there we go i've given that a really good clean out just relocate that gasket that was around the bowl and everything is absolutely spotless now and that's probably the best i can do for cleaning out this carburetor so one thing i did notice as well is when i was taking the carb off one of the gaskets which was a paper gasket was uh actually failed so i've just taken the gasket off of the other side of it like that and i've got some gasket paper as well and i'll just cut a new gasket to this shape and that will fit the other side of the the uh, carb plate so i'll do that as well so i'm just going to reassemble this now and then we'll go outside and put it back on Right, just bolted that back on, put this little screw back in that holds it to the back plate. They're quite tricky to get the old carbs back together on these little Hondas, so uh, be prepared for a bit of a fiddly job. Right, okay, so I'm going to turn the petrol on now. Put it on the deck. Put it on fast. Right, well it's actually operating now. It's a little bit lumpy still. That could be due to the mixture. But at least it's not cutting out now when I put it straight onto slow speed. Could probably do with just a little bit more speeding up and taking the mixture in a little bit so it's a little bit stronger. 
Okay, it's not running fully correct at the moment, but I've identified the problem was to do with the mixture screw and also the throttle stop screw, screw on the side of the carburetor wasn't in enough. We wasn't getting no slow running speed at all. It was just cut out before. And the lumpy running, I've actually improved because it's now running on slow speed and it's a little bit less lumpier than what it was. So I'm just going to play about with that and I'll see you again in the next video anyway. So bye for now.